Tonight, a wild story about Donald Trump in a 1991 interview about his love life. The 25-year-old story is making headlines as the Washington Post goes digging through Trump's past and what it promises will be a series of reports uncovering every detail about his life. In moments, Howie Kurtz will join us on that. But first, John Roberts has the details. John? Well, Megan, back in 1991, People magazine writer Sue Carswell was looking for the scoop on Donald Trump leaving then-girlfriend Marla Maples for model Carla Bruni. When Carswell called Trump's headquarters, she was told that Trump wasn't available. A short time later, she received a call from a fellow who identified himself as John Miller, but sounded an awful lot like Donald Trump. What kind of comment is, is coming from, you know, your agency, from, from Donald? Uh, well, it's just that uh, he really decided that he wasn't, uh, you know, he didn't want to make the commitment. He didn't want to make a commitment. He really thought it was too soon. Uh, he's coming out of a, uh, you know, marriage that, uh, and, he's, and he's starting to do tremendously well financially. He's somebody that has a lot of options, and frankly, uh, you know, he gets called by everybody. He gets called by everybody in the book in terms of women. And, uh, like who? Well, he gets called by a lot of people. You can't say, like, did Madonna ever really call? That was, that was, he was so set up with that, you know, Madonna called, and what happened, I mean, it's a, I don't know if you want to listen to this. What is your position? Well, I'm sort of handling PR because he gets so much of it. The voice he is 25 years younger than today, but the New York accent, cadence of speech, and inflection on certain words does sound an awful lot like Trump. In fact, according to articles Carswell wrote at the time, gossip columnist Cindy Adams and Marla Maples herself identified the caller as Trump. Despite those historical assertions, which Trump must have known about, as Carswell says, he described it as a joke gone awry, he emphatically denied it was him in an interview this morning. No, I don't think it, uh, I don't know anything about it. You're telling me about it for the first time, and it doesn't sound like my voice at all. I have many, many people that are trying to imitate my voice, and uh, you can imagine that. And this sounds like one of the scams, one of the many scams. It doesn't sound like me. It may be that Maples misidentified Trump 25 years ago, though given the fallout from the call, which ended their relationship, Maples at that time seemed to be on pretty solid ground. Megan? <laughs> OMG, OMG, OMG. Whoever John Miller may be, we know one thing for sure. The reporter in that 1991 audio tape is right here with me. Joining me now, Sue Carswell. She worked for People back when that tape was recorded, and now she's a research reporter for Vanity Fair. Sue, great to see you. Nice to see you, Megan. What the hell? What the hell, I'm a hometown girl. <laughs> So you believe it was Trump? He faked it. He faked being a, a well, PR person. Well, he apologized person. afterwards and said he was sorry. So he, he admitted those, to you. Yes, I mean, in another phone call, mm -hmm. but not during. Obviously, during did the conversation. Did you say why did you do that? Yeah, I, I mean, and he had no explanation. Just he just moves conversations, you know, conversations along. <laughs> and so you call up Mar Marla Maples and say, is this Trump? Was this Trump? He says he was John Miller. Well, I was trying to be a little bit more delicate. What happened when you did that? She cried. Because he was, was saying, I didn't want to give her a commitment. Yeah, he, and he even talked about, you know, Madonna being after him and Kim Basinger and just everyone calling. Carla, I mean, who didn't call? What did you, and then he took you out after this? Yes. Uh, as a form of apology? Yes. With Marla. For fooling you? With, with Marla and another editor from People Magazine. So, okay, so that happened and then when you heard him to deny it because he's still denying it this morning on the Today Show what was your reaction well I think he should come clean and apologize to me now because now it's suggesting that you you misled us yeah that I'm lying I'm not lying his denial was you know it was that doesn't sound like me it's a, it's interesting because if somebody called me up and said did you call and pretend to be your own PR person I would say no I never did I would I have never done something like that ever I wouldn't say right. that doesn't sound like me. Right. So you, you, you don't believe him. Were you surprised to see him misleading? No, I'm not surprised to see him misleading. Of course not. I mean, I would probably be a little shocked that, you know, this came into my life. But, the, Megan, the main thing here is that I didn't leak the tape. And there what? were two people on the conversation. Wait, you, t you taped it because you're a reporter doing yeah, your job? Yeah, and I lost the tape. Well, you were the only one with a copy of the tape? Yes. When did you lose it? Back 25 years ago. Did somebody have stolen it? No. It was in my house, and then I moved apartments. So who else would have had a copy of the tape? Donald Trump. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you're suggesting, you're suggesting Trump leaked this to the yes. Washington Post? Yes. Why? He got me. He's done stranger <laughs> things. Because he loves publicity? Yeah. 
So you're suggesting that he may want us talking about this right now because it generates a new cycle, perhaps? Hello, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, it's been fascinating. Thank you. I'll see you up in Albany. All right. Our mutual hometown.